if we eat the same thing day in and day out, if we eat the same way, eventually our bodies adapt and they become stuck or they hit a plateau. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, I don't see how that could be bad because what I eat is relatively healthy. So how could that be a bad thing for me? Eating the same thing every day can lead to a lot of negative side effects. Low energy, it can give you digestive problems, SIBO, it can weaken your immune system. There's so many, believe it or not, potential long-term health issues. But did you know being a creature of habit, eating the same thing all the time increases your chances of depression, Alzheimer's, neurodegenerative disease, and certain forms of cancer? Hey, my name is Shalene Johnson. Thank you so much for joining me today here on The Shalene Show. Today, I'm going to answer a question that I've had repeatedly in my comments. It's something that many of you who listen to the show say, Shalene, how come you don't talk more explicitly about diet phasing? How has your diet phasing changed? And I know many of you phase your diet and you've wondered how specifically I'm doing that, what approach I use, and why I haven't talked more about it in recent years. Well, I'm glad you asked, and today I'm gonna break it all down. So I first wanna start by explaining what diet phasing is for anyone who's not familiar with this term. Diet phasing is very much like periodization. So if you're familiar with personal training concepts, the idea of periodization as it pertains to personal training or physical training or getting results for somebody physically is the concept that the body adapts. The body is constantly looking for homeostasis. It wants to stay the same. And in order for us to make constant improvements, we need to be introducing new stimuli. As a matter of fact, the concept of periodization was introduced in the 1960s by a Russian sports scientist who specifically was trying to get optimal performance from his athletes. And what he discovered is if he introduced new stimuli in phases, that his athletes would perform better than anyone else in the world. Of course, since that time, it's a concept that many in personal training, those who help people build a better physique for a living, people who help train athletes for competitions or the Olympics or whatever, they have applied these concepts of periodization to give people optimal results. And basically the concept is you're introducing new stimuli in phases. So you train a certain way for a certain period of time, the body gets used to it, and then you introduce a new stimulus or a new stimuli or a new training protocol. The new training protocol could be Um, introducing a new type of workout. It could be changing the way that you trained, like even just lifting slower, using heavier weights, using fewer reps or lighter weights and more reps. So it's just a way of like keeping the body guessing. So it's always improving and always adapting, but never hitting a plateau. And the concept of diet phasing is basically periodization, but for your nutrition. So think of it this way. If we eat the same thing day in and day out, if we eat the same way day in and day out, eventually our bodies adapt and they become stuck or they hit a plateau. And even though eating the same way day in and day out is something probably a lot of us do, and maybe you're thinking to yourself, I don't see how that could be bad because I what I eat is relatively healthy, so how could that be a bad thing for me? Eating the same thing every day can lead to a lot of negative side effects like low energy, it can give you digestive problems, SIBO, it can weaken your immune system. I mean, there's so many, believe it or not, potential long-term health issues. You know, being a creature of habit, eating the same thing all the time, all of us regularly do this, but did you know being a creature of habit, eating the same thing all the time increases your chances of depression, Alzheimer's, neurodegenerative disease, and certain forms of cancer. Evidence supports the idea that Nutritional choices can impact estrogen levels, body weight, body fat, and reduce your risk of disease. Based on new research, it's advisable for women to consider adjusting their dietary approach during hormonal changes, stress, or when experiencing any negative symptoms related to their health. And all of this improves metabolic flexibility. I'll also explain why it is diet phasing, changing up the way that you eat from time to time, is an incredible way to improve your gut diversity and metabolic flexibility. So let's start with metabolic flexibility. What is metabolic flexibility? Well, I think the best way to understand metabolic flexibility is this. When you are metabolically inflexible, your body just can't handle the introduction of new foods, 
new ingredients, a new way of eating. Just you change your habits for a couple of days because you've gone on vacation or it's like a girl's weekend or whatever. And you can tell because your body just becomes inflamed. And when the body becomes inflamed, what it does is holds on to water. So oftentimes you'll just feel like very puffy. You'll often experience weight gain and you just don't feel good. Someone who has great metabolic flexibility because of that diversity, because they're regularly changing things up, can go on a vacation and eat all new foods and not experience any weight gain. They can go out to dinner with friends and eat something that they don't normally give themselves permission to eat. And it doesn't show up on the scale the next day. When you have metabolic flexibility, you increase typically your basal metabolic rate. Metabolic flexibility also often comes with better gut diversity. So what is gut diversity? Meaning all of the microbes that we have in our gut are, they're actually a living organism. As a matter of fact, we are comprised of more microorganisms than we are anything else. And when we have a diet that lacks diversity or a diet that is so consistently the same year after year, week after week, day after day, that lack of gut diversity has a tremendous impact on our overall health. Because nutritional health isn't just about counting macros. And research shows that the greater your gut diversity, the lower your risk of Alzheimer's, neurodegenerative diseases, and some cancers. So how diverse should your diet be? That's a great question. And how realistic is it for us to have a diet that's incredibly diverse throughout the week versus throughout the year? One scientific study took into account over 11,000 people, and they found that the sweet spot for creating gut diversity is when people consume 30 different types of plants on a regular basis. I don't know about you, but for most people, that's just not realistic. I mean, it would be great if I had a personal chef living with me and I lived in a place where like, I could garden in my backyard and I had access to 30 different types of plants. But for most of us, we just don't have the refrigerator space. We don't have the interest. We don't know how to make recipes that fit that kind of diversity. So how is it we can create this kind of diversity and also factor in convenience, our habits, and what it is we look forward to eating. I don't know about you, but like I will get on these kicks where I want to eat this like one food and I want it every single day for lunch for the rest of my life. And I know that's not healthy. And that's why I started diet phasing. With diet phasing, what you're doing is it's not a diet, but it's going, okay, I'm going to eat a certain way because food is medicine. So anytime I'm experiencing, I don't know, symptoms, for example, maybe I start having aches and pains or I start experiencing some weight gain. Maybe I'm going through a stressful period or I notice that my hormones are kind of out of whack. What I will specifically do is change my diet so that I'm adopting a, a new way of eating that gives me more diversity. And then I'll fall in love with the recipes and the, the foods and the, the menu items that I, I love on that particular diet. So say, for example, doing that this summer allowed me to incorporate more fruits and vegetables that normally I just wouldn't eat when I was here in the United States. Also healthy grains, like most grains here in the US are loaded with gluten. Eating bread in the US is a completely different experience versus eating bread when I was in Europe. It also meant like healthy fats, the avocados, the butter, the the, the fresh fish. So eating a Mediterranean diet, like phasing my diet to eat Mediterranean when I was traveling through Europe fit in terms of convenience. It fit in terms of helping me to reduce inflammation in my body. It fit in terms of the lifestyle. It fit in terms of availability. And also I know that it improved my gut diversity. By the way, I recently had an expert look into the statistics of the people who have subscribed here on YouTube and Guess what we figured out? Only super duper smart, cool people who have a great sense of humor are subscribed. So, I mean, like you're obviously you're subscribed, right? Like, duh, right? Okay, I'm just double checking. And now I know why certain people aren't subscribed. So the way that I diet phase today is very different from the way 
that I was doing diet phasing five years ago when I wrote the book, The 131 Method. So while this book, The 131 Method, I still stand behind everything that's in this book. I think it is a really great place for you to start if you feel as though you've been bamboozled by the diet industry, if you are like anti-diet, if you want to understand like how can you start to heal your body from the inside out, this was such a labor of love for me. However, when I wrote this book, I talked about diet phasing in this book, and I applied an approach where I was changing my diet basically every four weeks. And I've since learned that almost feels dogmatic, just like any other diet. It doesn't make sense, honestly. It, and when we know better, we do better. It doesn't make sense to tell people you need to phase your diet every four weeks because what you're doing might be working. And if you feel great, and this is how I decide when I'm going to phase my diet again. If I feel great, if I'm happy with my results, if I'm eating a variety of foods and I like the way I feel and I'm not dealing with any aches and pains, if it's working for me, I stick with it for a period of time until such time that things change for me and I know it's an important reminder to phase my diet. So sometimes when I think it's important for you to phase your diet is when you're experiencing a, a major shift in your hormones. Like maybe you're perimenopausal, maybe you've just had a baby, maybe you're now postmenopausal, maybe it just feels like everything's out of whack. This is a really good time to start by phasing your nutrition and looking into like what type of dietary approach, a nutritional approach, not a going on a diet, but like kind of changing the way that you eat so you're getting a, a diverse array of different food groups that you haven't eaten before. And the reason why I love as ascribing to a certain style of dietary approach is because you, you get to learn about like all of these new nutrients and new recipes and new ingredients that otherwise we get in such ruts and we eat the same thing all the time. And then our gut biome is well, it's not diverse. And when our gut biome is not diverse, then we put ourselves at risk of autoimmune diseases. And that's when we start to experience aches and pains. And that's when we experience metabolic inflexibility. You know that it's time to phase your diet when you're experiencing metabolic inflexibility. Like just, like I said, introducing like one new thing and you're like, oh, that showed up on my scale the next day. That's a good sign that it's time for you to try a new dietary approach. Something as simple as even intermittent fasting might be the solution for you. Food is medicine. And when you understand how by changing your dietary approach, you really can improve so many other ailments, you can expand your palate, you can let go of these beliefs you have around fear around food. For me, diet phasing helped me to let go of these preconceived notions I had about certain food groups. Like I was so afraid of carbs until I understood like, okay, what's a diet, for example, like the Mediterranean diet that I could try eating Mediterranean style and expose myself to all these new foods and in the process, create metabolic flexibility. Again, just to like kind of circle back to one through one method. I stand behind everything in this book, except I, I no longer believe that you need to change your diet at a, on a certain date. I just, I think that falls into that, the diet culture belief that there, have, there are these rules and you have to follow them. I just no longer ascribe to that belief. I think that's something that's been conditioned into us to believe that like that you have to follow certain rules. And I just, I don't, I know it's not healthy for me. And I don't think it's healthy for a lot of us. I think a lot of us have been conditioned to believe that we should ignore our intuition, that no matter how smart you are, you're not smart enough to figure out how you should be eating. We've conditioned, especially women have been conditioned to believe that you're gonna get it wrong, so you need to follow someone's exact diet. And I see this all the time, like I just recently did a free energy reset for women, and all we did was encourage people to walk every day and how to eliminate some known inflammatory foods from your diet, how to practice intermittent fasting if you want, but in a very relaxed approach. And it was shocking to me, actually it wasn't shocking, it wasn't surprising to me, to be honest, that so many people were like, wait a second, exactly at what time precisely should I be eating? And like, if I'm walking, um, what exact shoes do I need to be wearing? How hard should I be pumping my arms? Like, we are so 
certain that we're going to get it wrong. We've been conditioned to believe that we've we're going to fail, and we we've been yelled at for so long that like you're doing it wrong, and this is the right way, and that's the wrong way, and this is the, and there's only one way, and and if you're not doing it this way, well then what's wrong with you? You're going to gain weight. No wonder you look the way you look because you've been doing it wrong. Like it's just ludicrous. My dream, and I know this is like a total utopian belief that it's even possible, but my my goal, my dream is for women to someday get to a place where we have enough knowledge about the way the body works and how nutrition affects us that we can make decisions for ourselves that we don't get all caught up in watching YouTube videos and listening to experts and buying books so that we don't get it wrong. I would love for us to get to a place, that's like my dream, that we are like, oh, hmm, I'm doing intermittent fasting, but I woke up today and I'm hungry and I don't have to ask anyone or consult a book to see if it's okay for me to eat food. I don't have to worry if I've broken a rule by having coffee this morning because I know how the body works, I know how my body works, and I'm paying attention to how I feel, what feels good, what doesn't feel good, and I know what to do. And maybe that's utopian. I pray that, that these younger generations, that they, they get to that place because I feel like our generation has just been man, the ability to make a good decision when it comes to your own nutrition has been brainwashed out of us. And I want to change that. I have a program called Phase It Up. That It is in Phase It Up where I teach women how specifically to, to have enough knowledge to phase or diet and we help you figure out like okay what would be the right like what should i try should i try intermittent fasting should i go carnivore should i add more carbohydrates to my diet should i should i go completely plant-based should i try this not in, not for the rest of my life but like should i phase right now should i like maybe you just got a breast cancer diagnosis or maybe you're worried about cancer or maybe you just i don't know eating meat just doesn't feel right for you for ethical reasons or just you just don't feel good. And you're like, I'm, I'm kind of curious, like, how do I even go plant-based? So we kind of help women figure that out, but we're specifically taking, this is a new thing. It's a program that I created several years ago, but now I'm like, you know what? I, I just, please no offense if, I'm, if it feels like I'm excluding you, but I just realized in the last couple of years that the women who need the most help are women my age, women who are perimenopausal and menopausal because we have lived through <laughs> so much brainwashing, so much like torture and gaslighting when it comes to our bodies and nutrition. And hormones have been completely ignored when it comes to our nutrition and our fitness. And there's two things that we need to phase. We need to phase our fitness and we need to phase our diet. So I created this community called Phase It Up, but in the last couple of months, what I've made a very definitive decision on is I am going to serve women who are dealing with their hormones. And I'm going to help them understand how you need to think about hormones when it comes to your approach to diet and fitness. There's a million different options out there for, for women, and that can be very overwhelming and confusing. I want to like keep it very simple, but my goal is if, that, if that's something that you're like, oh, I, I need that kind of help, I just want you to know what phase it up is not. We are not going to tell you exactly what you have to do. And here are the exact rules. And if you don't follow them, then you're, you, you failed. This is a, a program if you're ready to actually sit in the driver's seat. If you're ready to actually go like, okay, I'll take the recommendation, but I also will make this work for me. Because that's where we need to be. That's where we need to be. The last thing I would ever want anyone to do is to feel like they have to follow a specific plan and there's only one way to do it. Like I, I wanted to create a program that was very grace giving. Like it gave you the knowledge with the experts, not, not me as the expert. I'm gonna curate the experts. We've got registered dietitians who've created each and every phase. We've got doctors who are specialized in hormone health who help you to understand like, okay, so based on what's going on, this is probably what you should be doing. And when it comes to the fitness piece of that, your fitness needs to be phased too, especially when it comes to strength training, so that you can continually make progress. It's called progressive overload. Progressive overload is basically phasing for your muscles. So 
this is brand new to phase. If, if you've wondered why I haven't talked about phase it up in a long time, it's because we, we have, it's going through a remodel. And I'm really remodeling it for ladies who are perimenopausal and menopausal. So if you're like, but wait, I'm 30, would it work for me? Um, yeah, when you start going through perimenopause. And I, I mean, it would work for you, but I'm, I really, really want to take care of a, a segment of the female population that has been so underserved. It, it drives me freaking crazy how many women I hear from in my audience who like they. I, I just went to my doctor. I get, I share with him all of my symptoms, and he said, "Oh well, we're not gonna we're not gonna test your hormone levels until you're you've gone one full year without your cycle." Or I hear from women who are like, "I'm postmenopausal. I just talked to my doctor about hormone replacement therapy, and he or she said, "Why would you be interested in that? You're already through menopause." I can't. Literally, I can't. And I know, I understand that doctors are, they're humans and the body is so complicated and there's so many things that they can specialize in, so many things that they can understand. We really can't expect them to be experts in everything, but here's what I wanted to do. I, I am going to create a database because this is the number one question I get. I'm going to create a curated database of the best menopausal doctors in the United States. We'll start in the United States. Maybe we'll expand to the UK. Maybe we'll expand to Europe. I don't know, but we're going to start in the United States and I am going to create a curated list of the best hormone do doctors who understand how to treat women's hormones. So this is a call to action. If you're like, I have the best doctor in the world, they listen to me, they under they're up to date on their research, they're cutting edge, they're amazing. Shaleen, they listen to me, they they give me a personalized approach and they're, they really care about the latest research. If you know someone who we need to put on our list, please reach out to us. I'm asking you to email us at support at phaseitup.com. Again, that's support at phaseitup.com. Put in your subject line, doctor recommendation. And of course, we'll do our best to vet the, those individuals. And um, and that's also going to be a part of Phase It Up. I've also just added fitness to Phase It Up, my own fitness programs. As many of you know, I, I stepped away from the consumer fitness because, yeah, not healthy for me. And there's so many different fitness programs out there you can do. You can do strength training or boot camp, HIIT workouts, Pilates, cycling. You know, there's so many different workouts. But the bottom line is when you're perimenopausal, when you're menopausal, I want you to focus on like what makes the biggest difference in terms of your hormones and your longevity. What is going to make the biggest difference in terms of reducing your body fat, reducing visceral fat, the fat around our midsection, and takes the least amount of time, takes the least amount of toll on your body. I know HIIT workouts are fantastic for your VO2 max. I get it. But what are the risks versus the rewards? So phase it up now. I'm adding all of my strength training programs. So if you want to get strong, that's where you're going to find it now is in phase it up. We're not focusing on 25 different types of workouts, variety, variety, variety. If you're looking for variety, there's a million other apps you can choose. At phase it up, I'm just going to focus on two things. I bet you've already guessed what they are. Yeah, walking and weights. You want to cycle? I'm sure there's a great app for that. It's probably Peloton or maybe Beachbody or body. But if you... If you're like, I have a limited amount of time, I want my body, I want my body back. I want to feel strong. I want to be confident. I want to, I want a shape again. And I, I want to get this body fat off. The two things we're going to focus on are walking and weights. And that's a new part of phase it up. So, so the reason why I haven't been talking about phase it up for last several years is because we've had a lot going on behind the scenes. So if you are already a phase it up member, uh, you won't experience any increase in your monthly fee. Uh, just know that we're while you're there, we're remodeling. We're remodeling the place and you can expect a lot of exciting new changes. Those are just some of the changes I'm excited about. But the true inspiration for what Phase It Up will be is going to come from you. For example, like j just hearing from so many of you that like, Shaleen, is there a place where I can get like a good recommendation for a great doctor? Shaleen, I need to know like, wh what do I even ask for in terms of a hormone panel? How do I know what is a baseline that most general pra practitioners tell us in terms of our hormones? And wh what is optimal? Like, I, I didn't know that so many of you don't have a doctor who's giving you this information. So those resources are going to be available for you. But 
the only way I can improve Phase It Up and specifically serve this community is if I hear from you. I need to know, what is it you need? I want this to be our go-to common sense spot where it's like, okay, this is, this is where I can get real answers. Not like one person's opinion, but like a, a way to cultivate the best information from the best experts so that you have a way to phase your nutrition that's been designed by registered dietitians with a, a master's degree in nutrition, not someone who's done like a weekend training on nutrition, so that you've got meal plans and recipes that are designed to work for you and fit your new phase, so that you've got a way to phase your fitness, so that you're constantly making improvements. Because I'm here to tell you the second part of your life, this 2.0 that we have entered into is going to be better than your 1.0. So phase it up 2.0 is definitely going to be better than phase it up 1.0. And, you know, I just think it's important to acknowledge that when we we know more and when we have new research, we have to change our opinions. And I, I think there's a lot of people who have written diet books and they, even though there's research that has debunked their position, they still like, you know, they hold on to the the dogma of their diet. And, and again, while I... I'm really proud of the work I did in the 131 method book and the majority of the book, like the recipes are great, the phase, all of that stuff is legit, but the way in which I used to tell people to phase their diet, it, it, the research doesn't support that anymore. So now um, hopefully this video gave you a good indication of what you need to do and, and how to decide when is the right time to phase your diet. And of course, I would love to invite you to become a part of the Phase It Up community. I've put a link just below this episode. You can click on that to learn more about Phase It Up. And it would be my honor to have you become a part of this community and and, and share your voice actively because that's how we're going to make this even better. We're gonna make this a movement. Now, if this is interesting to you and you really want to know more about the strength training component, like you want to learn more about like what it is I'm doing in terms of my cardio, which is the walking, you can watch the or listen to the video I did recently on how it was I've improved my step count. You can do so even if you have a job where you're working at a desk or you live in an area where the weather doesn't really suffice for you to get outside and walk much, you can watch this video or listen to this episode I did on how to increase your step count. And if you're interested in how to start incorporating strength training, I highly recommend that you start with my full body workout routine. This video and, or this episode I recently did where I talked about the difference between cardio and strength training. And at the end of that episode, I share with you exactly the routine that you can do for a full body strength training routine. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next episode. Okay, bye, love you. Bye.